Welcome my friends! In this video, I'm going to graph transformations of the tangent and cotangent functions in the form y equals a times tangent or cotangent of bx plus c. Here I have the general form of the tangent and cotangent functions. The period of tangent and cotangent is pi, which is different from sine and cosine, which are 2 pi. For trigonometric functions, we have important key points on the graph at every quarter of the period. In the case of tangent, or cotangent, the period is pi, so we will have important key points on the graph at every pi over 4 radians. This is what I call the increment. Now of course, cotangent and tangent have asymptotes every so often, so sometimes instead of a key point, we will have an asymptote. In general, you can find the period of tangent or cotangent by taking pi and dividing by the coefficient d, that is multiplying x. Note that this is different from when we had a sine or cosine function. Sine and cosine have periods of 2 pi, so in order to find the transformed period, we took 2 pi and divided by b. Since the untransformed period of tangent or cotangent is pi, we instead take pi and divide by b, so make sure to not get that mixed up. At x equals 0, cotangent is just beginning a period and has an asymptote. That's different from tangent, which is actually in the middle of its period at x equals 0. I like to think of the period of tangent as starting at the asymptote at negative pi over 2. A positive tangent function will increase throughout its period. A positive cotangent function will decrease throughout its period. You can see that reflected in the two graphs we have here. If tangent is positive, we will increase from asymptote to asymptote, and for cotangent, we will decrease from asymptote to asymptote. If you have a negative sign on the front of your tangent or cotangent function, that will just switch things around. A negative tangent function will actually decrease throughout its period, kind of like cotangent. A negative cotangent function will actually increase throughout its period. So when you have a negative sign on the front of tangent or cotangent, they start looking like each other. Let's take a look at some examples. We are asked to graph y is equal to 2 times the cotangent of 3x. We have a cotangent function, meaning that we start our period right at x equals 0 with an asymptote. This cotangent function is positive, meaning it will have the general shape that we are familiar with for cotangent, meaning it will decrease throughout its period. We have a value out front multiplying the function, which is 2. That's going to vertically stretch the function. Any point that we previously had a 1 will now become a 2. We can find the period of this function by taking pi and dividing by the coefficient multiplying x, which in general we call b. Pi over b is equal to pi over 3. That means this function will repeat itself every pi over 3 radians. The increment to which we will have important points on the graph occurs at quarters of the period. Pi over 3 multiplied by 1 over 4 is equal to pi over 12. We will have either an important point on the graph or an asymptote at every pi over 12 radians. Let's graph the function. As I've been stating, it's important to remember that at x equals 0, cotangent begins its period with an asymptote. That will be the case here. Nothing we have in this function changes that fact. So we will start with an asymptote right at x equals 0. I'm going to plot two periods, which means that I need to increment 8 times. Here are the x points that we will have on our graph. Pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, and 8 pi over 12. If we have incremented 8 times, that will include two periods on our graph. This is a positive cotangent function, meaning it will decrease throughout its period. So we will come down from positive infinity and then have some point at pi over 12. Since we have a 2 multiplying our function, that point must be 2. Then at our next increment, we will have a 0. So at 2 pi over 12, we will have 0. At the next increment of 3 pi over 12, we will be at negative 2. Then we will have another asymptote. Everything will repeat itself for the next period. So at 5 pi over 12, we will be at 2. At 6 pi over 12, we will be at 0. And at 7 pi over 12, we will be at negative 2. Finally, at 8 pi over 12, we will have another asymptote. We can connect the dots to draw the graph of y equals 2 times the cotangent of 3x. Let's try to graph y is equal to negative 1 half times the tangent of 2 fifths x. We have a tangent function, meaning that we will start in the middle of a period at 0, 0. This is a negative tangent function, meaning it will decrease throughout its period. 
Typically, a positive tangent function would increase throughout this period, so the negative sign means we will do the opposite. The period of a tangent function can always be found by taking pi and dividing by the coefficient on x. Pi over b is pi over 2 fifths. If we reciprocate and multiply by the denominator, we get pi times 5 over 2, which is the same thing as 5 pi over 2. The period of this function is 5 pi over 2, meaning every 5 pi over 2 radians, this function will repeat itself. We will have an important point on the graph, or an asymptote, at every quarter of the period. 5 pi over 2 times 1 quarter is equal to 5 pi over 8. Let's graph the function. Since we have a tangent function, we know that we start in the middle of a period at 0, 0, so we can plot the point 0, 0. I like to start graphing at the beginning of a period, so I typically increment twice to the left to find the beginning of a period for tangent. Our increment is 5 pi over 8, so we will have negative 5 pi over 8 and negative 10 pi over 8. If we increment 6 times to the right, we will have enough points for two periods. Here's what we have. At negative 10 pi over 8, we are at the beginning of a period, which means that we must have an asymptote. Since we have a negative tangent function, that means we will decrease throughout the period, meaning we will be coming down from positive infinity. At negative 5 pi over 8, we would typically be at the point 1, but since we have the 1 half multiplying the function, we will instead be at the point 1 half. We already have the point 0, 0, and then at 5 pi over 8, we will be at negative 1 half. At 10 pi over 8, we will have another asymptote. And then the function will just repeat itself. So at 15 pi over 8, we will be at 1 half again. At 20 pi over 8, we will have another 0. And at 25 pi over 8, we will be at negative 1 half again. At 30 pi over 8, we will of course have another asymptote. We can connect the dots in the pattern of a tangent function to graph y is equal to negative 1 half tangent of 2 fifths x. Let's try another problem. We are asked to graph y is equal to 3 times the tangent of x plus 3 pi over 4. We have a tangent function again, meaning that we will start in the middle of a period. In this case, we are shifted 3 pi over 4 units to the left, which means we will not start at 0, 0, but instead we will start at negative 3 pi over 4, comma 0. This is a positive tangent function, meaning it will increase throughout its period. Since we do not have a coefficient multiplying x, the period is just pi. The increment is one quarter of that, which is just pi over 4. Let's start to graph our tangent function. We already stated that we have the point negative 3 pi over 4 comma 0 on the graph. This will be right in the middle of a period, kind of equivalent to 0, 0 that we typically have on tangent. I typically increment 2 times to the left of this to get to the start of a period. Since our increment is pi over 4, we will have negative 4 pi over 4 and negative 5 pi over 4. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, I typically leave everything with the same denominator, so it's a little bit easier to follow. I can increment 6 times to the right so that I will have two periods. Here are the x coordinates that I will have. I know that I start my period at negative 5 pi over 4, so I will have a vertical asymptote there. Since I have a positive tangent function, I will be increasing throughout the period, so I will be coming up from negative infinity. At negative 4 pi over 4, I will have the point negative 3. I already have the 0 at negative 3 pi over 4, and then I must continue to increase at negative 2 pi over 4, so I will be at 3. At negative 4 pi over 4, I must have another asymptote. Then we will have one more period which will be identical. At 0, we will be at negative 3. At pi over 4, we will be at 0. At 2 pi over 4, we will be at 3, and at 3 pi over 4, we will have another asymptote. We can connect the dots to draw the graph of y equals 3 times the tangent of x plus 3 pi over 4. Let's try one final problem. We are asked to graph y is equal to negative 3 halves times the cotangent of x plus pi over 2. We have a cotangent function, meaning that we start with an asymptote at x is equal to negative pi over 2, due to the phase shift of pi over 2 units to the left indicated by the plus pi over 2. This is a negative cotangent function, which means it will increase throughout its period. A positive cotangent function decreases throughout its period, so the negative sign means we will do the opposite, we will increase. Since we do not have a coefficient on x, the period will be pi, and the increment will be one quarter of that, or pi over 4. Let's graph our function. Our cotangent function starts right at an asymptote, so at negative pi over 2, we will have an asymptote. 
I'm going to write this as negative 2 pi over 4 to match our increment. Then I can increment 8 times to the right to have our remaining points for x. This is what we have. Since we have a negative cotangent function, we are increasing throughout the period, so we will be coming up from negative infinity. At negative pi over 4, we will be at the point negative 3 halves, due to the 3 halves multiplying the function. At 0, we will be at the point 0. At pi over 4, we will be at 3 halves. At 2 pi over 4, we will have an asymptote. The remaining 4 points will just be repeats of what we already have. If we connect the dots, we will have the graph of y equals negative 3 halves cotangent of x plus pi over 2. Alright my friends, that finishes this video graphing transformations of tangent and cotangent.